Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to our channel. On this video, we're gonna give you guys a review of the 2021 Chevy Silverado 2.7 Turbo. A lot of American consumers are really afraid of this vehicle because they feel that the 2.7 Turbo is just too small of an engine. And I wanna let you guys know that this 2.7 is a very impressive pickup truck. And despite what people think about the engine being too small, it actually tows, drives, handles, and just does about everything better than the two other GMCs that I've had. So let's go on this road trip. We went all across America in this Silverado, and we're gonna tell you what we really think about it after putting at least 5,000 miles on it. On this video, we take my 2021 2.7 Turbo on a road trip across America to explore my experience in this brand new vehicle You'll see how we feel about this vehicle after driving it for 5,000 miles across America using the 4x4 and driving it through cities all over the country. Are you guys ready? Let's do it. All right, everybody. So we're now entering Wisconsin on a road trip across America in a Silverado. All right, guys. We're now in Madison, Wisconsin. A little bit of mud on the truck, so we're gonna take it to the car wash because we're off-roading in Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, pretty much. Now we're at 4,500 miles, so I need to get an oil exchange here really soon. Um, they say it's 5,000 miles to the dealership for the first oil exchange. Should I slam on the brakes? No. It's attacking my vehicle. That thing, whoa, whoa! That thing like a hurricane, man. Look at that thing right there. Look at that. Whoa! Look at that thing right there. What, what's going on? Get that, that pressure washer. Get that. Hey, what? That brand new Silverado. That's a brand new Silverado. What are you doing? What's going on? What the crap is going on in my Silverado? Silverado right there. What now? What, is it going to put a lift kit on it or something? And we just reached. 5,000 mile milestone. We're now in Frankfurt, Kentucky at Alfonso's Taco Shop. Top speed is electronically limited to 106 miles per hour. Kind of disappointing. I wanted to go faster than that. Alright everybody, we're now in the area of Knoxville, Tennessee, in some Cuban food mine. There's a lot of industry in this part of Kentucky. Yeah. There's good stuff going on in the town. Alright guys, we're now driving through eastern Kentucky in our Silverado, enjoying all the Silverado things that you can do in a Silverado. What's up everybody? Welcome to Lexington. Yes. I went to Lexington, Kentucky, yo. I first test drove the 2.7 in Prattville, Alabama, and I absolutely loved it. I tried to trade it in for my Yukon, which is a 5.3, which I also have it still, and I love it. I used this vehicle to road trip, and I absolutely loved my Yukon. I also had a 6.02500. I put over 100,000 miles doing junk removal on this truck, so I'm very familiar with JMC and their products. Despite whatever Scott Kilmer tells you, I love their products of GMC. I bought the truck in Punta Gorda, Florida. It took going to over 20 dealerships in Florida to find a 2.7 turbo. I drove it in Prattville, Alabama, and I absolutely loved it. And I knew when I went on a road trip across America that I would want to do it in a 2.7 because of how fast it is. I just love the turbo and hearing that turbo whistle. We went to Baltimore. We went to New York City. I was so happy to get this 2.7 on the road and across America. We started off in Fort Myers, Florida. We made it all the way to Northern Michigan, just about to Canada. We went across the Mackinac Bridge into the Upper Peninsula, and then we drove back into Florida. I'm pretty sure we did more than the 5,000 miles. 
I put aftermarket wheels on them and I took it off right away. The ride just wasn't as comfortable. You can figure going from Florida to Canada, we're about 15 days in the vehicle. It can get quite tiring to be in a vehicle that long. So you want a newer, comfortable vehicle when you're on the road traveling, especially these long distances. I can tell you that I've traveled a lot and I feel very comfortable. My back hurts a little bit, but that's normal from being in a car so many days. Overall, it was very comfortable despite the long ride. At least for the first 5,000 miles, I can tell you that this is an amazing vehicle. Everywhere I go, it looks great. People love it. They tell me it looks good. And I've really enjoyed the driving experience. And it's been the most enjoyable vehicle that I've ever had so far. However, the long-term reliability of this vehicle past 100,000, 150,000 miles and beyond, it is too early for the American consumer to know that, and only time will tell whether the resale value and reliability of this vehicle in the long run will make it a great product. But for now, I'm really enjoying it. Let's go outside and see the interior and all the little specs about the vehicle, and I can further explain to you guys what I like and what I don't like about the vehicle. And let me tell you that there's a no association disclaimer and a personal opinion disclaimer. I'm not associated with GMC. I'm just telling you guys what I think about the vehicle since I bought it and I took it across America. All right, guys. So for the final part of the video, we're actually going to look at the truck itself and what I like and don't like about it. Right now, we are north of Atlanta, Georgia. Let's take a look. So on the outside, I love the styling 100%. I didn't like that I had a little bit of an issue when I first put on the bigger wheels. I know you can get a Chevy like this one where it has more clearance, but I think the stock Chevy should really have enough clearance underneath it to where if you were to get bigger wheels, you wouldn't have to go with a lift kit because I really don't want to put a lift kit on a brand new truck. Other than that, the exterior is absolutely impeccable. I would have really liked if this one came with the chrome piece. Some of these come with that piece in chrome. I really love the detail in that it says Chevy right here on the top of the bed liner. It's a Chevrolet right here. And all the way around, I really love all the little detailed designs of the truck bed. And it does have LED lights for the truck bed, which is awesome. I wish it had came with some type of rubber matting. I can't believe that they would let you just get this truck without a rubber matting. Um, I think it's kind of like a, a price cutting thing. I really think it should have came with a rubber matting. In fact, I got the rubber matting from my Yukon in here for my motorcycle so it doesn't scratch up the bed. The towing capacity on this thing is a little bit interesting because all the torque is at 1500 and it's got really low in torque. In other words, when you're leaving off the line, it's very quick. So even though I have a, a, a 6.0 and a 5.3, this pickup truck with a 2.7 is able to tow really efficiently and i feel that it tows more comfortably than my 6.0 and my 5.3 even though my 6.0 has 3,000 pound more capacity it's rated for 7,000 pounds and that does the job very well and because of that low end torque that it has it really does a great job towing so as far as towing capacity i think it does really well it went directly from the dealership to the tent shop because the front windows are not tinted. I think they're not allowed to do that. I love that it's got some type of mud flaps on it, even though it's not much, but it does have them. This one being black, doesn't really look all that well with the details, but I will tell you that the white trucks and uh, color trucks look really great because of this little piece right here. I can't really complain about the stock wheels other than the fact you can't put something bigger on here without a lift kit which is absolutely ridiculous the one that i got is a little bit longer in the back they have one that's a little bit shorter i definitely recommend that you spend the extra money and go with the longer back now it is a absolute mess in here we are road tripping across the country so i really wanted to show you guys the interior of this truck empty and the way it's supposed to but this is how we're actually using it right now so i'm just going to show you guys what the crap it looks like now the back is super spacious i mean just look at how much space you got between this seat and that seat if you're back here, it's pretty cool. And I'm actually really claustrophobic. I really struggle to be in the back seat of cars. And on this truck, I've actually hung out in the back while Kitty drives a few times because it's that much spacious. Dirty as could be. I really love that it came with these factory mats. The carpet's underneath it, but then you have like these mats over it. I love this. 
um, because I can just kind of get this truck dirty and not worry about it. Now, it needs a massive cleaning once I get back to Florida, but that is okay for this video. Again, I actually want to show you guys what the actual use of this truck looks like. So I would have loved to do this video with the truck perfectly clean, but I started to think about it. I'm like, you know what? Let me just show you the truck, how I'm actually using it. Might make more sense for this video. I don't know what these lines are. I believe the water comes through here and then it flows through here. And I really don't like the, what these lines are, but I have them on both sides. I don't like the way this crack comes through here because if, if you look straight at it, you can see that it's a line that goes like that. Now, if you look at it from an angle, you can see that the plastic is kind of warped in a few places because it's really, it looks like really weak quality plastic. And in fact, if you touch it, you can see it move. And uh, GMC has had problems with the dr cracked dashes in the past. I don't know if they're trying to address that with this, but um, what it does do is that it's not an even line. You can kind of see here how it's tied up there tight here open here open here so this piece of plastic and all these plastics are kind of very loose and i don't like it because if you're looking at it from an angle it almost looks like it's cracked already even though it's not it's just that this line is uneven it does have a parking brake that's by a button i used the 4x4 when i was off-roading in michigan but the two-wheel drive seems surprisingly good considering that it didn't seem to get stuck at all even on two-wheel drive I think it's got a locking differential, but I'm not really oh. sure. That doesn't seem to be a problem. And also the four wheel drive, when you put it on, you can't even tell that it's on. It's very seamless. You can't even tell when it does it and it rides almost the same. So it seems like a very, very smooth four wheel drive, even smoother than let's say a Ford Explorer, which has a nice transition into the four wheel drive. The doors are great. You can put a lot of crap in them. Now this is a problem. The sound system on these trucks is absolute garbage now that we crank it up everything comes on the infotainment center is really good but it does have a few issues about it that i don't like one of the issues that i don't like is that it really in order to have navigation you have to have your phone hooked up to it so you would hook it up to your autoplay and that is how you have navigation you have to have your phone hooked up to it so when you hook up your phone either here or here then your phone's navigation will actually show up here and it's supposed to be done so that for safety reasons but once you're in the map mode you're not allowed to re look at the map or scroll through it and there is an app a way you can scroll through the map through here but it's very impractical i think they did it for safety reasons but it was horribly uh i think they need to make it to where you can actually scroll and zoom in and see where you're going because sometimes when you're going somewhere you actually want to zoom in and see what's in the area or what towns you're going through and you're not able to do that unless you go on your phone exit your route and then you do it on your phone i think it's very impractical and it needs to be exactly the way google maps is the interior design is incredible i love every single piece of this design i love how you have power outlets here so you have the ability to turn on your power outlets and that's one here and one in the truck bed which i used to charge my electric motorcycle so that's really uh, awesome right there you can turn it off this is another thing i really don't like about this this will turn off eventually there we go so or will it there we go so that's off now one thing i really don't like about this car is that when you start it this turns off the car automatically now i really don't like that because it seems like every time you turn on the car, you got to remember to turn this off. Or when you stop at a light, it turns the car off. Now, I don't like that a lot at all. And in fact, there's actually somebody on the internet that sells a cord that you can use to disable that. So the fact that they made a cord to disable it lets you know that the people that are buying these things really don't like this thing. I personally don't. And uh, it's supposed to be for like environmental type people or something like that. I don't know what they're thinking about it. But when you stop at a light, it turns the engine off. A lot of newer cars do it and it's really annoying. You have the ability to drop your tailgate by holding down this button, which is very practical. Your hazard lights are right there. That's pretty cool. And the sound that it makes is actually pretty pleasant compared to other vehicles I've been in. Um, I think this is traction control off in case you wanna do some stupid stuff. The air conditioning is very simple and it works fairly well. I have no complaints about the air conditioning system. I really think they could have thought a little bit more of practical application while you're going through here. Uh, you have your controls to zoom through here, but you don't have it on the steering wheel, at least in this model. Um, I think the, the cruise control is very confusing because when you turn it on, it turns that little thing on. When you set it, it turns green if you were to set it. But if you press this button, it turns it off, I think. 
but it still keeps that thing on. So you gotta come back and press it here again to remove that little thing. So I'm even though I've used the cruise control for a while on this truck, I mean, we've gone cross country trip and we've used it a lot. It still seems pretty confusing to work around that. And I think they could have came up with a design that was less confusing on the cruise control. It does have LED lights when you turn on the lights, um, which they look cool, but it is frankly not enough light for the interior of a vehicle. And again, they might've been thinking of some type of safety concern, but the fact is that the lights are very dim and they are not sufficient for most of your use. The center console is awesome. It just works perfectly. You have the ability to put stuff in here. It's actually quite spacious. What I don't understand is why they don't have the ability to put in a cell phone anywhere practical in this vehicle. There's no practical place. And in today's world, you have two cell phones. Yes, you could put one up here. Sometimes you could put one here or here. Or you could put one like this, I guess, is why this is slanted. None of that makes sense. It is assumed that if you have two cell phones in today's world, like most two passengers will, that you need two places to put two phones that you're charging, especially while you're traveling or working. And there seems like no practical place to put a cell phone. There is this little cubby up here. However, we haven't even used it at all since we bought the truck. Every once in a while, you can put your phone up there. But if it's a sunny day, for example, on a sunny day, you cannot put your phone up there. Every once in a while, you get a little bit of glare from the top of this thing, from the sun. If the sun's in that direction over there, you get a, bit, a little bit of glare hit you in the ice, and it's a little bit annoying, but it's not as bad as some vehicles I've been in, like the Toyota Corolla, where this piece is actually chrome. There, it's really bad. Notice that the backup camera turned on briefly. I love the turbo and how fast this truck picks up. You can almost hear the turbo. And that is what I love about this truck. It's just to hear that turbo whistle. It moves very efficiently. It handles very smoothly. Uh, I, a lot of people tell me that, you know, you need a 6.0 or a 2500. Um, I believe that for the most part, this really does the job fairly well. Um, towing capacity at 7,000 pounds is not great, but it is a lot for a 2.7 engine. And again, the transmission is the same transmission as you would have on any other Chevy truck for the most so part. So I really don't have any complaints about how it drives. It actually drives really smooth for being a pickup truck. And once you get into the heavier 2500s and even the 5.3s, I feel like they feel heavier, bulkier, and they just don't drive as nicely. So it seems like uh, one of the reasons that I like this truck is just that I'm in it all the time. And when I drove the 5.3s and the 2500s, they're really bulky. The steering, it doesn't, you know, it feels like you're driving a brick basically on the 2500s. And if you're in the truck all day, the fact that it's so smooth to drive this truck, um, you know, the trouble really picks up when you step on it. And it just feels like a really fun vehicle to drive for the most part. And I don't really have any complaints on driving it. Driving this vehicle is a complete pleasure experience. It really is an incredible experience to drive this truck. As you can see, when I turn with my windows down, all the water that was on the roof kind of slid directly into the vehicle. So there are some engineering little mishaps here and there. I think a lot of work did not go into practical use of this design as far as people actually using it like we are right now and going on a road trip with it. There are a little bit of things like this right here that makes no sense to me. Also, the interior plastic seems like they absorb moisture and, and just anything really well and you kind of get a lot of contrast in the color so it doesn't seem as black and pretty as when we first bought it. it seems like the interior colors kind of seem to fade the seats are actually really comfortable even though they are not exactly leather however this piece right here is leather and as you can see some discoloration here i don't know if it's from the sun or from whatever but it does seem like the plastics that they use in here seem to really absorb uh oils and you know if you're eating or something or if it's just, just from your hand or touching it or whatever it seems like there's always a lot of color contrast in here um with any oil or moisture or anything really and i think they could have worked that out a little bit better no sunroof on this one the window sticker for this truck was forty nine thousand dollars and i was able to get it out the door with tags taxes just everything for $46,000, so I got it for $3,000 less than sticker price, and it's because I walked into the dealership and I told the salesperson, hey, look, I'll buy the truck if you don't try to hassle me. If you 
if you just sell me the truck and give me a good deal on it, you have a sale. And I have cash money, so it should be a fairly easy transaction if you want to sell the truck. If you want to play salesperson, then you're not going to have a sale. So I was really happy that the salesperson that I used wasn't pushy and really just let me get the truck for a good deal. And that's why he got the sale. Really easy, stress-free sale for him. And I still don't know what this does right here. I think it has something to do with a timer for the lighting. Because you see lighting more, lighting less. I think it's a timer for the lighting. I haven't messed with it yet. I don't know what it does. It does have trailer mode and that's really practical um now it's automatically senses your trailer which was confusing to me it does have trailer brakes and i think i think that my trailer has trailer brakes installed into it i also bought a new trailer to work with so it has this for the trailer brakes and it has this for the trailer brakes unfortunately i don't know if my trailer works my trailer brakes work and if they do work i don't know how they work because i've never had this set up on a truck so i don't even know how this works but it's there you have the ability right here to launch a jellyfish out of the back of your truck so if you want to attack somebody that is always very useful you can see the jellyfish launcher is right here and i don't know how far it shoots the jellyfish but it's a great option in case you really want to just attack somebody Silverado. It says you have airbags on the side of the seat. I really uh, don't even know how that works or why. The seats are okay. Now, I really don't like how this plastic piece comes up to here. We're both really morbidly obese because we eat a lot of food and stuff like that. And I really don't like how the seat kind of comes up to here. And I'm afraid that with a lot of use, both me and my morbidly obese wife, we're both very fat. Uh, we're both going to have trouble, and most people who buy our Silverado are probably fat. I mean, if you don't care about the environment, you probably don't care about what you put in your body either. And if you're buying a Silverado, you probably don't care about the environment or something. You're not buying a CRV or something. You're buying a freaking Silverado, even though it's a 2.7 turbo, whatever. I think the seats could have been more morbidly obese, obese considerate. I'm really afraid that in the long run, these seats are going to become uncomfortable. Although for now, they do a great job. They're still somewhat firm. Now, when you use the middle seat, it is a whole lot firmer. Um, I sat in the middle seat a little bit ago, and it was a lot firmer, which lets me go. This seat has really sell, settled quite a bit and only a little bit of use. And I have no idea what this does right here. I just now discovered it. I have to look into that. So I think for daily use, the most aggravating thing about this pickup truck is the fact that the sound system is really, really weak. I know they have a Bose sound system upgrade for the more expensive trucks, but I think the base model sound system is absolute trash. They should have really done a better job with the sound system. Even like a 18 or $23,000, I don't know what Corolla costs these days, but if you get like a really cheap Corolla, even their sound systems are killer on a new car. The fact that a new sound system on a vehicle is this crappy is kind of upsetting to me. It seems like they really, really skimped out on a good sound system for this truck. It's really, really trashy. The aesthetics of this vehicle are incredible. I mean, it just looks good. I love everything from the front design to the back design. You can see there's like a little wave right here that kind of V's into there. It looks really great. I think the aesthetics of this truck, they did a really good job all the way around it. Oh, it just, it just looks right. It looks good. You have the ability to um, step into the truck bed through here, which is really, really useful. The push button is really awesome on this thing. You can just push a button and it opens the tailgate. And it also flashes your lights when you open your tailgate, which is a neat little touch. Um, again, you have the LEDs in here, like I said earlier. I just don't get why it doesn't come factory with some type of mat. I think if this came with a factory mat, it would be awesome. I'm sure it does. But I think that should really come standard because as soon as you put something in this shiny black truck, but it's, it's going to get scratched up. There's a lot of these little buttons. I don't know what they do, but they're everywhere. You have these right here. You have those. I think they're just to hold uh, the moisture out of the truck bed. Again, you have an electrical charge in the back. I'm really pleased with the truck bed on this truck. Other than the fact it's a terrifying notion to even think of the idea of scratching it up because it's shiny and it's black. And well, um, that's not too many complaints on the truck bed itself. Now, I have noticed that when you're loading stuff, you get chips and things on here. 
I think they should have done a better job of figuring that out because obviously when you're using the truck, you're going to get a little scratch and dings. But I really love, again, how they designed this thing here. I, I love how it looks. And again, the aesthetics of this pickup truck on the outside are 100% awesome. They did a great job with the design. It's a really cool truck to drive. I love it. Now, after off-roading, it seems like there's a lot of cracks and crevices here that make absolutely no sense. I don't know exactly why there's all these holes and stuff here. Maybe you're for, for mud flaps or something. Um, there's a nail that comes through here. There's these holes right here. There's these holes right here. So there's a lot of stuff in here that is kind of an eyesore once the truck gets dirty. And I don't exactly know why they left so much stuff that doesn't seem to have a purpose. Um, there's, you know, just a lot of stuff that you can see holes and stuff through there. I don't know exactly what they were thinking when they did that. There's a little plastic piece right here and there are fender wells. And it does seem like it's not like the strongest down here. I mean, you can see when you move here, how it all opens and cracks. So I think they were really trying to save materials when they did all of that. Um, you have these little strips here um, which I think I'm afraid at one point they're going to fall out. But other than that, I mean, it's just little details with the truck. Overall, I love the truck. I think it's a great purchase. And the 2.7, again, the biggest hurdle people have with it is that the American customer really expects every single pickup truck to be a V8. And you just don't need it. Look, I have a 5.3 and it has the option to shut off four, four cylinders. It doesn't have the option. You're forced to do it. And when I drive my 5.3, you have this mode where you can put it on, the, on and it shows you whether it's on V8 or four cylinders. And like 60% of the time, it's on four cylinders. Now, people do go in there and they take off, you know, electronically take off that option. And it only runs on eight cylinders. And that way it will run longer. You have more, um, more mileage at the end because all eight cylinders are working instead of just four. But even the 5.3s are shutting off to four cylinders. With a turbo, you get that low end torque going this pickup truck does exactly the same thing as a 5.3 or a 6.0 so i really don't understand uh how backwards the american buyer is and that they think you need a v look back in the 40s and stuff like that in the 50s you got like 70 horsepower out of an engine that was a v8 now a v8 gives you like 400 horsepower we're just living in different days. Nissan's been doing a foreign line engine that's all over the world. A lot of people are using foreign line engines and I have actually been waiting for a long time for Chevy to come out with a four inline engine. I've been waiting for this moment and I'm glad it's finally here, especially with a turbo because the technology today exists to where you really don't need a VA and the American customer in their mind wants a VA but just because you want it and you think it's cool doesn't exactly mean you need it anymore especially with the technology that's out there even Mitsubishi which is a crappy brand an uh, engine that had 120 horsepower they can get close to 270 horsepower with a turbo and a little bit of technology the fact that it has a 7,000 pound capacity for towing means it covers about 90 percent of the towing that I need every once in a while you're gonna go past that towing capacity so then you do need a 2500 but i do it so little that it just doesn't make sense by the way the gas mileage combined on the vehicle has been almost 20 miles per gallon that's city and highway combined i think that's really awesome and it feels like a whole lot more than that coming out of a 5.3 suburban or yukon i first hopped into a 5.3 and I was driving around the 5.3. I'm like, bro, this feels so sluggish for a new vehicle. When you're leaving off, it feels like you're driving a brick. He says, hold on, I got something for you. So after I test over the 5.3, he told me, you know what? Just trust me, try this truck. And I'm like, well, about the towing capacity. I'm not gonna be able to tow with a 2.7. He says, well, it's rated for 7,000 pounds. So yes, you will be able to tow. And I think for some reason, the one that I test drove was actually rated at 9,000 pounds. This one's only seven. I don't know why that happened, but whatever. The one that I tested, I think it was rated at 9,000 pounds, which is almost the same as the 5.3. So after I complained about how the 5.3 was sluggish and all that, now that I remember, uh, he says, you got to try this thing, man. So he got me into it. And sure enough, this thing sips off the line. It flies. The trouble sounds cool. I absolutely loved it. I tried to trade in my Yukon for it and it, uh, they didn't approve the trade in for some reason, uh, but whatever. That's why we bought this thing cash, so now I don't have to worry about what the crap the bank thinks. So thanks to that salesperson, 
I was able to figure out that in fact, doing a lot of research, I you know, I thought about it for almost a year. I mean, for a long time, I thought about this pickup truck and how it drove. And I seen a few of them on the road. And I did some more research and I came to the conclusion, well, I'm gonna take a shot with it. How long these engines are gonna last, that's really the last thing to be determined. And that's gonna take more than 5,000 miles to figure out. I mean, Ford's been doing their EcoBoost for a while now and uh chevy kind of took a little bit longer than ford to put that out there so i hope they took the time to do it right undoubtedly the engineers who designed this stuff um they did some great things in the design of the interior and the truck in general and they kind of forgot a few other things typical for gmc to kind of just do things and not really um look too deep into them but i hope with the engineering aspect of the engine they'll do as good of a job as with the aesthetics of the vehicle because that is something that I definitely will not have too much tolerance for if it doesn't work out. You know, a lot of times here in the United States, um, you know, the mentality of Americans here, we have this mentality where, for example, uh, when I was in Alabama, I didn't get vaxxed. I thought it was unnecessary. And then one day something happened to me and it changed the way I think. And I said, you know what, we're just, we're not really being smart. We're being stupid and stubborn. So yes, I did go with the 2.7 turbo. You don't need a V8 if it works it works sometimes we americans are slow to adapt and we're stubborn as crap i got vaccinated i switched over to a four inline engine i don't need a v8 and a lot of other changes were made in my life because i realized something uh, you know living in alabama that many times the things we do we don't do them because they're the practical thing or the efficient thing we do them because it's the only thing we know and we're too slow and stubborn to look beyond what we're used to so if you're willing to step outside of the comfort zone um this engine was made to replace the 4.3 which i had and was a great engine very economical very reliable um the 4.3's transmission wasn't really as capable as the transmission on this thing which was a weak spot of the 4.3 and again this vehicle was created to replace the 4.3 and uh the 4.3 wasn't the strongest of engines um this one cranks out a little bit more horsepower and i think it's going to do a better job than the 4.3 but it's definitely not a v8 it's not going to last 400,000 miles or whatever but at that point i don't want to have a truck that's got 400,000 miles on it i want to have a truck that's got less than 100,000 miles on it because I, I travel a lot and i can't deal with reliability issues and at some point at a certain point every vehicle is going to have reliability issues the older vehicles that I had didn't have this backup camera thing. I think it's a great safety thing. Really enjoy that. So there it is. The mindset of the American consumer really, really works against this vehicle and probably its resale value, although they have been selling a lot lately. So hopefully people uh, will start to recognize what I recognize, which is that the technology exists where you don't need a V8. And again, it's just this mentality that we Americans have that you need to have a V8 because it's a truck. But honestly, um, it's just outdated thinking. Look at the clock, find out what year it is and what type of technology is up. Just because you don't believe something doesn't work doesn't mean it doesn't work. It works. So the fact that the people that are buying trucks right now. And, and GM even understands that. That's why the 5.3 has that thing where it shuts off the, the four of them. Because even the engineers know they don't need a V8, but they have to put a V8 in it so they can sell these things. But if you look at the little gauge on the 5.3 when you're driving around, you figure out you really don't need it. Other than low-end torque, which with a turbo, you eliminate that. And now there's a lot of engineering to this thing. I mean, you're talking like even the water pump's electric. I mean, there's a bunch of other crap. A bunch of other YouTubers explain all that on YouTube. I'm just giving you the practical real-life application of driving this thing. I really like it, and it's been a great thing. Another thing that's really cool is that it integrates my sound system. It's got a microphone here, and I realized the other day that if I hook up my cell phone to the uh, my phone while I'm recording, it's hooked into my, uh, my car. It all Bluetooths together. And I could probably be able to put the camera through Bluetooth on the outside of the vehicle like I used to and then be able to record my audio in here, which was a huge problem that I had. So there's a lot of technology into the system of this vehicle that takes time to figure out. But you'll find for whatever the crap you do, a lot of good applications. There it is. That's the actual real life use of this truck. I absolutely love it. Um, can't have really too many complaints. The only thing left to see is long term reliability. And that's one thing that's up to 
Time to tell, nothing the else. steering wheel. Um, you're only allowed to, you know, it has a little plastic piece at the bottom where you can lift or drop the steering wheel. It seems like that little plastic piece at the bottom is really weak. Again, it seems like really cheap plastic. Now you only use that like once or twice a year. It's not like you're using it all the time, but I think they could have made that a little bit stronger. And also I feel like the steering wheel doesn't have enough flexibility. My wife is a big girl. She hops in there, she can barely, you know, the steering wheel, I think it needs to have a little bit more um, angle, you could say, or something. And also the little plastic piece at the bottom underneath the steering wheel that moves it. It seems like that little piece, um, it's just really fragile. It could easily break. But again, you don't use that every day. Again, GM probably being cheap.